Yeah, hello, here is Heidi from the Wisdom Factory. And as you can see, it's hot. <laughs> we are in Italy. We are in late July, beginning of August. And I'm here with Miriam von Grün in Holland. And she said that's warm there too. <laughs> Well, it's, you know, I, this is, this is more than warm enough. <laughs> okay. We will have 38 centigrades today. So it's really, you know, I put on, as you can see, uh, the African shirt, which I bought last year in the Integral African Conference. Oh, and it okay. feels like Africa at the moment. <laughs> I believe you. No, it's more like 20 degrees here. So it's. Oh, nice. yeah, that's, that's cold. I would call that cold. <laughs> Anyway, I, uh, I'm happy to talk with you, Miriam, because we know each other for a long time, always uh, in the context of Integral. And lately, we were both facilitators on the online conference uh, of the Integral. It should have been in Hungary, but it was online. And it was nice, too. I, I really liked it. And I also liked your um, lunchtime breakouts. <laughs> <laughs> It was a good experiment. But today we, we might use integral as a framework, but we don't really want to talk about integral. I'm curious about what she is doing. Because mm -hmm. in the conference, she was talking about things which I'm very, very, very interested in. And what is that? It is Well, dear Heidi, I'm also very excited to talk about this lovely work that I am uh, doing now. I am a psychedelic trip guide um, and so in the Netherlands we have uh, we are in the lucky circumstance that psilocybin containing magic truffles are legally available and so I get to work with people that ingest those and use that um, opening that they create for their uh, introspection personal development uh, potentially healing and mm. it's uh, it's by far the most amazing job I never thought I would have. So. <laughs> That's great. You know, I'm really interested in that. First, uh, uh, first of all, I always thought there must be something there which I have never tried because in my student years when everybody was on LSD, I was so conservative and I would never try things like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And now I realized also seeing the statistics that psilocybin is the less dangerous drug existing, while exactly. alcohol is right up way, on, way, the, on top. <laughs> yeah, which is really... Nicotine, caffeine, all the way up. All the things. Dangerous for the personal life and dangerous yeah. even for the other people. You know, I remember in my childhood, uh, in, at night when I had to come home, and even later in my adult years, I always was afraid of crowds of men being drunk coming my way. So, you know, it is dangerous alcohol, but strangely mm -hmm. alcohol is allowed, psilocybin is not allowed. We can mm -hmm. think about why that is. My idea is uh, if you find these mushrooms somewhere behind your house or in, on the fields, nobody can earn on it. Yeah. So, Maybe that might be a reason why it has been uh, efficiently black, how do you say blackmailed? No, what is the, the word? Law for, yeah, yeah. made legal, yeah. Yeah, and, and people really believe that. Uh, I, I talked with a friend of mine, a doctor, and she was, oops, no, yeah. never. And I sent her an, a video about a research uh, which they are doing in America and also in Switzerland about the good effects uh, of, of this thing, you know, and I would like to talk with you about that and have you explain a little bit uh, what it is about. And I'm yes. really excited. <laughs> yes, we're in, uh, we're in the, in a renaissance, I, I think, of uh, the psychedelic uh, movement, shall we say. Um, and there was a lot of, there's been a lot of repression going on over the last decades and, and uh, propaganda I guess yeah propaganda are bad yeah. uh, psychedelics will make you crazy um, and um, you know um, 
yeah there's just there's a lot of stigma around it and i can also understand why people would be a little bit afraid because one of the things that happens is um hello for my fellow control freaks uh, <laughs> it the descriptions people give is that there's not as much control over your mind and what goes on in your in your body than there is in a normal day so that is scary but that's also the great gift because it allows different perspectives and new ways of being in the world um, to become available yeah um, and when you when you drink alcohol your mind is changed too so uh, and nobody seems to be fearful of that so why with uh, uh, mild drugs like psilocybin you know and not you, you don't need to have heroin immediately <laughs> <laughs> which would make you dependent and yeah. all studies as far as i've read they show that psilocybin doesn't make dependent no so. it's it's even anti-addictive <laughs> as, uh, as they like to say so psychedelics are a very different class of substances than narcotics for instance so cocaine heroin um, you know, the, either the stimulants or the depressants shall we say or the numbing um, so psychedelics have a tendency to open you, um, to make you more available to life, to um, allow awe again about the outer world and the inner world. And so they're anti-numbing, but they're also anti, uh, yeah, anti-addictive because for two there's a physiological reason and a mental emotional reason for that one the physiological reason is that you build tolerance very quickly to these substances so you have to take more and more and more to have even some effect right so you have you have to take a lot of downtime before you take some more because otherwise it just doesn't work anymore so there's no point that's the physiological reason. And then the mental emotional reason is that, especially if you've done inner work during your experience, you're not, it's pretty intense. It can get pretty intense and you need to chew on it for a while and you need to integrate it for a while. And you're not going to go, Oh, that was awesome. Let's do it again tomorrow. You're just like, no, I'm, I'm okay for a while. I need to, you know, to, to integrate this and to, to percolate. A little bit before I can even think about doing that again or maybe even not do it again there's uh there's quite a lot of people that have one experience and then they're yeah they're done I have a friend who is saying that she had when she was young she had this experience and it was okay for her wonderful but she doesn't need it again so yeah that's fine so yeah. um what benefit does it have I mean, I have to confess, I have had an experience yeah. and uh, I actually ended up working on the grief I had with Mark. It was about a year after his death and I was still, you know, outside towards the people. I seemed functioning, but in my inner life, I was still in a sort of a depression and yeah. I couldn't get myself out of that you know, find a more positive uh, way towards life now alone. And what shall I do? And shall I blah, 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 blah. It yeah. was very difficult. And when I had this experience, I really was c getting into the sadness and into the, um, <laughs> I sort of almost refeel that. And I, I entered into a movement in a circular movement. Yeah. And, um, I didn't feel it immediately. I tried to, you know, to say, oh God, that's nothing. And the next day I had to, to drive with the car for all to, to Italy. And, you know, I thought, okay, it's just done. But I realized, first of all, I still was kept by the experience. It was sort of unusual, I would say, but not as completely losing control or whatever that was not it i still had control it was a bit strange to walk and go to the bathroom but but you still can think and you still can uh, you know listen and hear and whatever it is and see it's slightly different but when i then entered into this 
uh, cradling thing. Oh, yeah. It was like soothing and it was wonderful. And when the, the, some weeks later, I discovered, oh, I am not depressed anymore. I, I started to, to regain a positive view on life and get the courage and also the power to recreate myself. And I really attribute it to this experience. And that's yeah. also why I really want to have people listen to that and change their mind on it, not condemning a thing which is really, really helpful. And it's nice too, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, the tagline for my um, company is joyful empowerment. Yes. You know, it's, there's, a, there's a joy and, a, and that awe. That, um, and there's a, what I really like about what you're saying, <clears throat> there's the direct effect during the experience where your mind and your senses are altered, but it kind of flows with you. For some time afterwards and it and it's more of a, a way you're held by life than it's something front of mind and it's and it's often often people describe when I, when we have an integration call a couple of weeks after they're like yeah nothing's changed much and then I start asking a bit more and they go oh actually this thing is gone <laughs> this exactly. thing that took up a lot of and it's just kind of ah, it became Unimportant. Uh, irrelevant. Yeah. 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 Super Except sticky thing was just. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's and it, it's so, so smooth that you don't even realize that that exactly. happened. Exactly. And uh, if you go there, uh, as I did, that something spectacular yes. would happen and you know you are changed for the whole life and immediately yes. from one moment to the other. That's not what happened. <laughs> no usually not <laughs> yeah and so but that isn't that super interesting right? yeah. it's not this one time flip but it's significant and it's and it can stay over time especially if you don't get it in its way if you allow that thing to stay gone yeah and not go like oh where is it and let's build it back up again uh, what people like me who are control freaks, at least I was for a long time, if they uh, do that, they have to expect that this controlling thing pops up very, 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 very um, clearly and that you are confronted with your necessity of controlling yeah. and also with the question, why do you control so much? Is it yeah. really necessary? Do you really need to control that? Is there a danger? What danger is there? Mm -hmm. And you get into uh, questioning also your life assumptions, you know, in many ways. Sure, you, you need to be a little bit prepared that you have these questions. And if you are interested in yourself, into life and into yeah, humans, I think then it's the right thing for you to do. But yeah. I would also say with the accompaniment, not just do it for yourself and then who knows what happens. But for yeah. me, it was important that there was somebody there holding me, not in the arms, but <laughs> with a presence, with a space, you know, and I could so, ask questions and I could, uh, you know, feel safe. That's really important. So tell me about what you, what you exactly are doing with that. Yeah, so that safety is, like you say, it's very important, that sense of safety. And, and that can be created in very many ways, but one thing is certainly to have somebody present um, that has been with a lot of people in that state. And that can be like a calm, sober nervous system for you to co-regulate with uh, while you are you know, going on a journey that you don't know where it's going yet. And, and um, that is both, uh, you know, that's, that's the beauty of it, that it's unpredictable. Um, and that the only thing you can predict is that it won't look like what you think it will look like. <laughs> 
That's true. Whatever you're thinking, no, not that. <laughs> um, so I'm there to help navigate that territory uh, and to allow uh, the potentiality of it to come to the fore a little bit more. So I, my company is called Guided Tripping and the guidance is not so much like, I know we've talked, I know who you are, I know where you need to go uh, on the map of, uh, of the psychedelic uh, territory. No, I don't know. Or I know where you need to stay away. I have no idea. I mean, we talk, we connect um, um, and help prepare um, and preparation. There's like three main stages, preparation, the experience itself, and the integration. Of course, the bulk of what I do is during the experience itself, but before and after is also important. Um, it's partly to create that connection to help create that safety, the preparation. And then there's also the attitude of not so much having a goal orientation of, oh, I want that pattern to go away or I want to uh, you know have this thing uh, happen or get rid of that thing then it will have been successful right mm -hmm. to go from that to uh, an attitude of exploration and curiosity and I say it like this like oh that's you know not here or there mm -hmm. but isn't that interesting there's probably something I don't know about this yet. Otherwise, something would have changed already. Or something I'm not getting. Something I'm not hearing from other parts of myself besides my brain. Um, get curious about it. And pay attention to how things work in your life. For instance, that control. How does that show up? What's the... You know, what's the water I'm swimming in, the, the, the glasses I'm looking at life through? Isn't that interesting? Um, so that's the preparation. And I, yeah, it needs to, to the curiosity of people. Yeah. You cannot take it as a, as a medicine, as a pill, which the no. doctor prescribes. <clears throat> you need to collaborate with that. It's uh, collaborate in the predisposition to, to yeah. be curious and to be excited to be yeah. to be ready to be excited uh, about what is coming out and in case something strange comes out not to be afraid of it for me strange yes but nothing uh, fearful yeah. I'm not at all so yeah. was, it can happen it can happen yeah okay. for sure anything can happen that's the whole um, idea and that's also what I'm there for is to help orient to difficult things in a way that they're not overwhelming, but that you can meet them and that they can tell you something that helps, something they need you to know. These, these things, for instance, the fear, for instance, overwhelm, for instance, resistance and control, for grief, um, uh, life purpose, um, anger yeah. um, joy peace everything it can all happen um, and i think in many ways you you also despite that you don't really have the control not the absolute control but you have the control about what is control. i remember in the group i was in that there was one girl who she actually disturbed me a lot she she made all sorts of things, laughed and everything, and she refused to allow the thing to 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 guide her into yeah. something else. So, it, you you can if you the resistance resistance is big enough, you can <laughs> resist. Oh it. yes. But, but why would you do it then if you resist? So. <laughs> yeah. But it's also showing you something, you know. Uh, the yeah. control desire and also the resistance and i do say i had a fair bit of resistance which came out of fear for sure and so i think it's normal can you speak to that yeah um so it's impossible not to have expectations <laughs> and it's impossible or i think it's healthy to have to be nervous 
about it. When people say, oh, you know, I'm ready to go, no problems. I'm a little bit like, okay. Because <laughs> it's also, um, it's, it's good to approach it with a little bit of reverence. And I like what you're saying. It's a collaboration with the substance, with the setting that you're in. So the old adage set in setting. So the set meaning your mindset, how you come into it. That openness is super helpful. Um, I always say your only job today is breathing and allowing. Exactly. Breathing and allowing and maybe making a suggestion. But more than that, that's more than that you can't do. So you can't control what happens, but you control how you are with what happens, which is true in life. I mean, it's a microcosm. Yeah, in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what I also saw, there seems to be a certain phase that I heard afterwards, which uh, happens to be normal, I think, in yeah. that uh, journey, where you see every color and forms and which are so wonderful. So what I said, be wanted to say is to to be also able to be in awe to see the wonder in in things you know which unfold and in your inner eyes and even in the outer eyes you know uh, this is something you you may know from dreaming yeah. but it was much much more colorful and much more light or illuminated in in this experience and it was like oh Look at that, like thousand and one night, like a child imagines. <laughs> but. It's, it's often, it's like geometric, kaleidoscopic, multicolored, uh, moving, um, harmonic, organic. Um, some people have more um, recognizable imagery and for others it's more abstract. Um, and for instance, like the shirt you have on now, that would be like moving and there would be yeah. traces and there would be like, yeah, it would just be going all over. The, like, like you could trip out on that shirt for sure. <laughs> and this is what people associate a lot with the the visuals, right? With this experience, that's that kind of the artwork that you may have seen. And and it's an important part of the uh, the experience because it's, it just connects you to beauty. Yeah. It's just so intricate and pretty. And um, so that awe, it helps you do that. It helps you get into that state of awe. Um, and That's some, okay. Now, what you said now, because yeah. of the word is, uh, could be uh, used for that, you know, that makes me think about it is from Africa, and Africans have these colors often, and they have traditional the use of herbs and things like that you yeah. know so that might be a connection i yeah. wonder how that is I, i've never asked anybody how how drugs are seen there anyway it's it's not uh, africa is west africa is the continent where ibogaine comes from so yeah. it's, um, okay. it's a different psychedelic um currently often used in the treatment of addiction because it's a very uh, it's a very strong um, addiction interrupter uh, as well as a psychedelic other topic not my expertise uh, mm -hmm. but very interesting and every continent except I think Antarctica has um, native psilocybin containing mushrooms so almost every culture has been in contact with them but it's been very repressed, obviously, by the Christian church. <laughs> um, because if people can get into connection with God by themselves, the heck, <laughs> no, we can't have that. Um, or with their godlike own parts. You know, that's not very good for the dogma. Yeah, um, because that's a power structure and not yeah. uh, uh, something which is primarily to help the yeah. evolution of people yeah That's but all these cultures have used it with a lot of respect and in ceremonial type environments Sacred. so not just on a regular friday night yeah. which is the more like recreational aspect of it 
um, which came up in the 60s and, and 70s a lot. Um, and it's also interesting, like, yes, you can have fun with it. Everything is pretty and beautiful and you may be feeling more connected to the people around you and to the music. Another thing that can happen is synesthesia, right? So where your senses start to float into each other. So a lot of people see the music, for instance, that's the most well-known one. But you can also uh, taste colors or um, uh, talk to um, talk to trees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I do that too, but in a normal state. <laughs> normal, in normal consciousness. Yes, yeah, but a lot of these things are possible in normal consciousness as well. It's just this little like, here you go, here's an opening. If you like it, keep using it, keep doing this, keep connecting to this. Just like you just did when you said, oh, now that I'm talking about it, I can almost feel it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, I, I talk, I say that that's sort of like a, it's a blueprint. If you like the blueprint, go build the thing. It's your nervous system. It's your experience. Um, if you don't like it, don't do anything with it yeah. and it will wither. What I'm thinking about is when you realize that there are other layers of consciousness and they seem in this moment very real, who is saying that this normal way of consciousness is the real one? But the, yeah, this is this is what's called the noetic, N-O-E-T-I-C, of I know, I know, on in all my fibers, on all levels, that this is easily as real as normal waking consciousness. Okay, depends. It it's there. Yeah, and depends on, on the on the brainwave structure and whatever. And we happen to to see this reality as reality, but it could also have been different. So you know, that's you lose a little bit the dogmatism about what is real and what is not real. And yeah. that's really good because in times like today where everybody thinks there is only one reality and all the rest is um, yeah. everybody else is crazy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, a reminder that there are other layers of existence and of reality and that we shouldn't be so sure that what we think as normal and real is the only way of being. It is a way, but might be not the only one. Might be the other ones have the same um, right to exist. So yeah. for me, it would be also helping to create peace if we can... Uh, if we can allow ourselves to to explore the other realities because we don't have to fight anymore against whatever <laughs> but that's my philosophy around it. so we were now in the preparation in the setting and yeah. we were already very much in the in the trip itself because that's fascinating right topic, you know <laughs> Where everything comes together yeah. yeah did you say already everything you wanted to say about the preparation I mean, there's always more to say, but uh, yeah, no, I think that that's, that that's enough. Um, yeah, let's, let's get into the, the meat of it, right? Um, one of the things that this propaganda over the last decades has made people very afraid of is bad trips, right? Whatever that may mean. Um, and so those are actually very rare very rare and pretty easily preventable. Um, so one of the things, uh, there's a lot of things I can say about that, but one of the things that we do is have a limited dose. We're not going to go crazy. We're not going to, com you know, combine all kinds of stuff, which is, which is a risk factor. Um, you know, um, we're preparing also by making sure that you don't have any contraindications um, physiologically and uh, mental health wise. Um, we're, there's a safe setting. There's no, um, and there's someone there that if things start to go towards what might become a bad trip, you can steer away from that by reorienting and by allowing me for instance to help you with that reorientation 
And that's one of the reasons why we don't, we do one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm there the whole day, just my focus on you. Uh, so I don't have to go from person to person and I'm, you know, um, and the, and another thing is um, we don't go to super high doses because of many reasons. But one of them is even though you might not really want to talk or might not want to move, you can. You can. So if things start to get difficult to an extent that you're not sure you can handle, um, you can put your hand up or say something and we can we can navigate that together. So that increases the, yeah, the safety and the, the, the likelihood of not having a bad trip. We've never had one in our, in our session, let's put it that way. Um, and I say that because like you say, it's one of the safest um, substances out there. It's um, organic, you're, there's no toxicity, there's no overdosing, there's no, um, you know, you're not going to do harm to yourself or others. Um, so it's, um, and having said that, then you can kind of flow and have whatever needs to happen, happen. It's, I've heard it called a non-specific amplifier, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. interesting way of phrasing that what I've said before is it opens your system. Um, it l allows your default mode network to quiet down a little bit. So the normal autopilot day-to-day -day, uh, self-thought um, type of stuff just kind of eases to the background a little bit and other things become possible. Other connections can be made between parts of your brain and parts of your whole system mm. and that whole system. Exactly. Um, so there's often a connection with the body that people aren't expecting because they, they, when they think of psychedelics, they think of those visuals, but it's not your eyes just that are having this experience. It's your whole system. So there can be this, um, something that people often describe is there was no new information. There wasn't anything that I didn't know yet. I just feel it now. I know it more deeply. I know it on a different level. Exactly. Right? Because our minds can get really like, oh, I, I understand myself so well. I've done all this introspection. <laughs> Why aren't I changing? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, there's an, there's an, um, yeah, there's a, there's a whole other system going on that needs to be on board with that. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to share an experience yeah. I had as was, you know, when the mind is running like normal and still you, you think and think and think at a certain moment it came to me. It's all. It's not yeah. important. And I really felt as if there is nobody really there to, to think about these things anymore. You know, it was like yeah. sort of empty in my, yeah. in my head, you know. Also, there was everything there, but the things which you normally think you want to know and want to say and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You, I, I remember I, I, I told that to my, to my guide. I said, it's a girl in, in German, yeah. it would be. Yeah. <laughs> oh <my> <laughs> and this is such a good experience when you realize that things which you hold so tight normally and it's so important to, to talk about it and to make it clear and then comes the moment. <laughs> yeah. Full-heartedly, you know, that's really gone. <laughs> And there's, but there's also, does, does this resonate with you as well? That in that whole is the gal, <laughs> there's also an understanding of why, of why you would do that normally. Yeah. Yeah. It seems ridiculous. I get it. it. <laughs> I get it. But it's really not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> and you start to laugh about yourself. Yeah. In some way. <laughs> yeah. Like laugh, laugh about and laugh with. Yeah. 
in a in a very sweet compassionate way it's not like laughing at yourself right no, no, like, no, no, no. oh like heart oh, sweet. Opening. come here it's okay <laughs> come on. yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, that's and nice so, i'm now re 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 to realize no what yeah. did they reconnect re experience the that what what happened mm -hmm. to me that's really nice i love it very good <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, so there's a memory in your system of that yes, yes. that you can tap into. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> I love that it's happening now. Very good. It's happening for me too. I'm like all goosebumpy and whatnot. Oh, wonderful. So we we haven't finished yet, but really, oh, okay. people should say, see that it's not dangerous. It's wonderful, and it's helping. It's so much helping with life especially when you have a burden and it's all so hard and it was hard for me no yeah, that it time was, after of course it was hard but no it's so much better and there's still there's still hard moments but only the memory as you can see is lifting me up thank you miriam for, for talking with me <laughs> yeah of course i think that that's another thing actually it reminds me of another quality that can happen is this um the things we resist or the things we find hard or the things we want to go away um or we should be over by now or whatever um they don't they're like well you're just gonna feel it now okay <laughs> you're just gonna feel it and once you allow yourself to feel it it's like oh this isn't actually that bad mm -hmm. it's good this is healthy i need to feel it let it come Exactly. And so it it, uh, it increases, it's an intense day, a lot will happen, but your bandwidth to be with those things also increases. And that's neurochemically for in large part, like you can explain that. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that that's an important thing as well, because people can be afraid of, oh I'll, oh, I'll just be crying or, oh, this very difficult thing will take up the whole day. Well, maybe it needs to, but you'll be able to. And the whole day is not really feeling like a whole day. I mean, it oh, goes, it, time it, is. Yeah, it's it's no time. <laughs> what people say, spiritual people, no time doesn't exist. That's a sort of a yeah. the experience that, which you can make. That time is just not important. That's just mm -hmm. you don't realize how the time. I real I remember that I was a certain moment that I felt it boring because nothing happened. But yeah. then I saw the, the clock and I said, oh, it's already, you know, oh. <laughs> yeah. So let's come now to the, to the third phase. You say, yeah. and the, after a while, when the immediate uh, yeah. effect is not so clear anymore and people can uh, yeah. go home or so, uh, yeah. what is happening then? Yeah, so... Um, the, the the arc i guess of the experience the direct experience would be after ingestion a while nothing happens then you start to wave up and that can be pretty steep i do a two-tiered ingestion we wait for the first piece to take effect and then if if that's enough we stay there and if there's like oh i get it now i see where this is going i could actually use a little more we take a little more after about an hour so then you kind of it ne it's never stable. It's, it's another quality. It's never, it never stays the same for more than three seconds. So there's a waving that happens even at the peak of the intensity or like chapters or you wave from one thing into another, it morphs. Um, this is, during this time, I just let you do your thing. M most of the time, people don't really feel like talking. Some people do, but most people be, are quiet, they have eye masks on, there's music playing, and that's it. They're not moving much. Sometimes they are, like you said, that circular motion. There's this wisdom of your body that comes online, and, and, and there's not this brain that's stopping it from happening. You're just allowing your body to do what it needs to do, which can be a really great way of, uh, of letting blocked things just flow. Um, and then after a while it starts to slowly slowly wave down you notice that those peaks are not as high anymore but that takes longer 
that can take well you know into the evening depends a lot on the person on their biochemistry we're not sure why um, how long that actually takes and sometime during that way down there's usually this organic time to switch from being in it to processing it a little bit that part of your brain starts to come online a little bit the whole idea of meaning making, which hopefully you're not too busy with during, like, what does this mean? How can I use this? this is, no, just be in it, right? Um, but that's that's kind of the start of the integration phase. Um, and during that time, we usually do something that I call translating, where you go, okay, so this thing that I was experiencing, how can I bring that into my life? How could that be useful to me? How can I practice that? Um, how can I make that practical and personal to me? Um, and that can look like very many things because it's so dependent on what happened here. Mm. Um, so I help with that a little bit. There's, I've been taking notes all day, so you can look at those. Um, the next day, hopefully, you get to write and, and walk and, and percolate. There's a good word of just letting things simmer. And don't if you can don't have any responsibilities because um it's kind of like a new seedling right so there's this little seed that was planted this super tiny plant that might become very powerful but it for now it's a little bit vulnerable so if you like bulldoze over that with meetings and you know there's it the chances of that taking root are are slimmer so that integration needs some space or pockets, not like days and weeks, but that first day and after that moments of practice, of allowing, of uh, cultivating, I guess. It's not an action plan. Do these five things every day, and you, will, <laughs> you know, uh, but um, it's creating space and cultivating that um, yeah, what you liked about it, that blueprint, whatever. Yeah. So those two weeks after are called neuroplastic. So there's neuroplasticity that happens where we thought the adult brain was kind of fixed. That's it. Uh, we've, we now know that through meditation and, and uh, especially body-based therapies, um, but also um, psychedelics, your, your brain can become plastic again. It can form new uh, linkages and, um, and, and, and like kind of blow the cobwebs out of old ones that have been out of use for a little bit. And um, that the, the two week period is, is, um, is potent for that. So anything new that you like, if you practice it then, it's got a bigger chance of of not atrophying and kind of withering away. Because um, people often describe, you know, those two weeks, they have a bit of that afterglow, da, da, da. If you don't do something with that, not like do, 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 but allow that, cultivate that, it will kind of ebb away again over time. So that's the, why integration is important, is unless you give it space, and, and, and um, actively allow those new things to develop, they will ebb away. It's just how it goes. But you can kind of, yeah, re-up on your experience by talking about it and feeling back into it by, um, yeah, by meditating, by having reminders, by whatever that is, that is for you. Yeah, for me, uh, when what I'm reviving, reliving yeah. uh, and now, it was the second experience, which was in many ways less um, less inhibited by my own mind. So. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> and that's really absolutely positive. And I realized that, that these two weeks, I was living still in a different space, which mm -hmm. then slowly uh, goes away. That's true. But yeah. I would love to be in that space because it's so much wider and so much more heartful, or I don't know how to say that, but I think that this space is a better way to live than our normal doing thing, uh, things all the time and being mm -hmm. German like this, you know? 
<laughs> so the question is, is there a way to hold it longer, this sort of experience? Yeah. So there are practices that you can do, embodied practices, um, you know, integral life practice, basically. You do integral life practice with your, with your experience. And um, that it goes away a little bit to a lot is normal. It just will. Because that, that way that you've, whatever, if you want to call it German, <laughs> way that you've been doing things, this is very deep groove. It's just, it's been there, right? It's all like, it's, it, so if um, that's, it's called the default mode network for a reason. If you don't pay close attention, you will default there. That will happen. You will do those things again. You will have those thoughts again. You will have that attitude again, that closing maybe and tightening and, forcing um so there's a lot of awareness yeah that you can build around that hopefully not uh, non-judgmental awareness like oh yeah i'm doing that again okay exactly. yeah. and that's what i'm noticing that i'm more able to do that without uh, leaving or at least when the judgment wants to come in i say oh Really? Hello. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's for sure the uh, the result of the other experience, I think, where, yeah. where I could stay longer uh, in because I, you know, I didn't have to go anywhere immediately. So that was really... Yeah. I would so that's on the menu. Yeah. That non-judgmental attitude that was like a pipe dream of like, oh, that sounds good. And in theory, I think I should be able to do that. <laughs> and then it's just like, Dunk. oh, yeah, yeah. of course. And, and it's not that you immediately become lazy or become, I don't know what. That's mm -hmm. not it. Because I think many people fear if they let go the inner critic yeah. and the, the, the sl slave. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, slave driver. <laughs> yeah, then they would be lazy and don't do anything anymore. No, that's not it. But you do it in a different way. Yeah. That's what I'm noticing. Exactly also now with all the shows. And so I'm not so... I have to do that that anymore. But I say, oh, good. And if we have a nice talk, and then, yeah, I will also put it on the website. Sooner or later I do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I will do it. You know, and I, I have the discipline to send out the newsletter. By the way, you can uh, 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 subscribe for the newsletter in the wisdomfactory.net. Uh, I, I send it out, you know, but it's not so like somebody with a whip behind me, yeah. you know. I, I just do it. Yeah, it needs to be done. Okay, sometimes it's not so pleasant to do the office work, but I, I still do it, you know. <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely a change. So there's more more ease, yeah. less forcing, yes. um, and it's actually much more in line with the natural order of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The flow, what, you know, uh, that people crave. Yeah, we are yeah. now talking about let's say normal situations and normal people, yeah. but uh, we I have heard listening to several YouTube videos that that is also very much uh, helpful for really deep depressions yeah. and for uh, end of life. Right. When, yeah, yeah, when um, when the fear is coming. Of, yeah. I'm wondering, when Mark died, at the end he was very much accepting, accepting he had these experiences in his life. Yeah. And not lately, but in, before. Yeah. And the last few weeks I saw his eyes, they were like, I saw the eyes of my colleague, Trippers. They were, you know, like shiny. Yeah. So maybe that has helped him too, too to, to accept that death was coming. That's now all thoughts which are popping up while we, were, while yeah. we are talking. That's nice. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> wow, it is nice. So people can, who are facing a different difficult thing like cancer or yeah. any other, but illness that's yeah. commendable to really yeah. yeah really do it try it 
que tú. Um, I would, uh, I want to, I want to caveat that. Um, so there's like three main containers that I think that psychedelic experiences fall into. These containers communicate. There's no like hard boundaries between them. But over here we have recreate, recreational, also known as celebratory. Mm -hmm. So for for fun um, and to no, well, so I, I think we know, right? And then over here is medical therapeutic, um, which yes, set and setting matter. That's set and setting make the, make the difference between these three containers. And the, and the one in the middle that I am in, I would say, is intentional. Is like, I'm interested in uh, exploring things that are difficult for me to get in touch with in normal consciousness um, for my own benefit, hopefully, right? Um, and that's my expertise. Now, if you have uh, severe depression, um, if you have um, end of life anxiety, there are very, very beautiful studies being done and ha have been done, um, but they require a very specific setup to be repeatable, but also because those things require more support around them than, for instance, I can offer. I'm not a therapist. Mm -hmm. um, so does it happen? Uh, does it exist in, in the Netherlands? Uh, therapy? therapists who are doing yeah that. yeah yeah and i also have one uh therapist on my team now so that's really great um but yeah so there's that's usually a pro the protocol is usually three times an experience with psilocybin uh, spaced about six weeks apart or for ptsd for instance it's mdma that's just in the research phase now but they have um approval from the FDA uh, for phase three trials, which are, which were happening um, until the Corona thing. Mm -hmm. um, and they were awarded breakthrough therapy uh, designation, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that th th it could really revolutionize uh, the way PTSD is treated and the way depression and end of life anxiety are treated, smoking cessation, all these other addiction treatments etc um but and then in between there's therapy there's preparation there's two people with you during that experience a male and a female one of them has to be a therapist etc 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 so there's this whole big protocol and i say that because um like you say if you think oh it's psilocybin that's doing that and i can do that in my room by myself well, <laughs> yes and no, right? It's, it's, a, it's a collaboration between you and the substance. But if there's more difficult things going on, um, then you need probably, you know, more elaborate support mm -hmm. um, for it to have that miraculous effect. Because it's not just the stuff, it's that whole package that's doing that. Mm -hmm. When I realized that it is so potent in, in these uh, situations, like fear of death and cancer and whatever um, treatment, uh, depression and so on, um, I thought it is a, a crime against humanity not to allow yeah. the, the treatment with these things, which is really, you know, <laughs> Big Pharma doesn't earn any money, that's it, but uh, it's so helpful and I'm hoping that people when they listen to us that they get inspired to at least not condemn it right away like for instance my brother still does you know <laughs> he is a, a doctor a psychiatrist so I hope that slowly uh, yeah. people can get the right treatment for yeah. the things they uh, they have and less harmful because that's not harmful to do a trip like this it's yeah. all this chemical stuff which might be needed sometimes but i think it's so much overused in in, in our health care or sickness care i would say yeah. <laughs> instead of health care uh, so yeah. that there needs to be alternatives and i'm glad that you are doing this and that in your country 
it's yeah we go away in every other country people who are doing it have a, a lot of fear and yes, they're yeah. putting themselves in uh, in a lot of danger yeah. completely yeah. by by um, yeah. yeah by offering such yeah treatments or experiences. which they have understood that they are very helpful and could resolve the problem but when the state says no then you end up in yeah. losing your license or whatever you know yeah. so i'm wondering you are doing the middle way uh, the middle yeah. uh, area uh, so the curiosity part and yeah. people who feel like being drawn to that how can they reach you and they can do a trip to you in amsterdam aren't you yeah. <laughs> that's even a nice city yeah, i know right it's a great great place to walk around in for a few days after your uh, your experience yeah, so our website is uh, guidedtripping.com. Um, and so there's we have currently five uh, people. So there's a little bio of everybody if you feel drawn. There's a lot of information there about uh, these experiences and how our, our way of doing it. There's other providers, shall we say, in, in the Netherlands as well that do more group oriented or that are therapists or et cetera. So um, now, of course, the group stuff is a bit difficult. So in that sense, we were prepared because we do one-on-one. -on -one. And you're very welcome to plan a free intake um, and, and fill out our intake form where you can gather your thoughts about and, and, and share your worries and, and questions. And we can talk about that. So, and then if at the end of that we feel like we have a, a good connection and this would be something you would want to go ahead with then you can plan plan for that and hopefully you'll still be able to get to Amsterdam mm -hmm. um because that helps um and yes I agree with you Heidi that it's um it is criminal that it's criminal yeah exactly um and so I hope that this research that's more in the medical therapeutic side will open up like in the us there's a lot of decriminalization efforts going on where at least it's not a priority for law enforcement anymore it's not the same as legalization obviously and i think hopefully the same will happen in the netherlands because currently it's just the truffle um which um which is is legal here there's some other psychedelic plants etc that that you can get here in, in the smart shops um but yeah i hope really that this wave um and, the, and this growing understanding that it's treating very very fickle and hard to treat um uh, yeah problems that are running rampant in our society um, that that will yeah open up more and more governments to uh, to allow this and that um, that will also allow more and more people to be trained in an open way yes. to be able to offer this uh, safely and, and you know, uh, healthfully. Mm -hmm. I hope so too. At the moment, they are occupied for a while with Corona. So these things are all going into the background, but yeah. let's hope. It's <laughs> happening. Yeah. The, the, what is it? The genie's out of the bottle. Yes. Again. <laughs> And even as fearful, ang anxious, uh, brought up people with very much respecting the law and everything like me, uh, I tried it and I say I recommend it and yeah. do it and contact Miriam and then you do it legally. Isn't it perfect? <laughs> it's so great. Yeah, it helps. It helps with the set and setting, you know, to know that you're not doing anything that's going to get you in trouble. Exactly. So. Yeah. Okay, I thank you very, very much. And let's hope that we have done a little bit uh, towards the legalization and the acceptance of yes. these wonderful things. Thank you so much, Heidi. Thank you. Thank you. you.